Greetings! In this video I'm reviewing a Makita 4.5 to 5 inch glass cordless angle grinder. Now this grinder has a brushless motor, 5 8 by 11 spindle thread, an electric brake, the AFT safety stop, spindle lock for easy tool changes, a paddle switch, and this is a fixed speed model that tops out at 8,500 RPM. I will talk about the electric brake and the AFT safety stop later in the video. Originally, I wanted a cordless angle grinder so I could take it with me to a store and use it to cut up long lengths of steel products because most home centers around here don't cut anything metal and the steel yard often wants 10 bucks a cut. I also wanted a grinder that was more convenient to use for smaller jobs than my corded angle grinders. And uh, well, honestly, it also looked pretty cool in the online photos too. And I know I'm not alone in the, I just want this and now I need to come up with some logical reasons to buy it club. As it turns out, I've never taken this tool to any home center or steel yard, but I have used it far more around the shop than I ever thought I would. And I swear, some months I use the grinder more than my cordless drill. So I chose this particular grinder because it has an electric brake. Stopping time is supposed to be about two seconds. I never actually measured that, but I can tell you that this is far faster than waiting for a regular grinder to spin down and far safer. than setting a still spinning grinder upside down on your bench. On a project where you do a lot of intermittent grinding, this feature can save a ton of time. This grinder also has some excellent safety features. First, the guards have to be slid on backwards and spun around before being tightened. With this feature, if the screw holding the guard tight, which is right there, vibrates loose, the guard will stay on the tool. You can see it's not even tightened up instead of falling off and perhaps becoming entangled in a moving cutting wheel or wire brush. And this other guard has a quick adjustment on it that doesn't give you any reason not to adjust it and put it in the right place, like perhaps having to get out a screwdriver and adjust a tightening screw would. Another safety feature of this grinder is what Makita calls Active Feedback Sensing Technology, or AFT. I mentioned this in the list at the beginning of the video, and what AFT does is shut off the motor if the mounted wheel, brush, blade, or whatever jams or is otherwise forced to stop. Just like what happened to me right here. Well, that just sucks. <laughs> That incident turned one of these into these. Abrasive cutoff wheels make quick work of cutting through steel, but are also infamous for throwing shrapnel everywhere when they break. If you have an abrasive cutoff disc or any other attachment get jammed, the AFT cuts the motor and minimizes the mess and potential for injury. A huge plus in my opinion. In the video clip I showed, the disc breaking was just an annoyance, not a shop accident, and that's a good thing. Other things I like about this grinder are, this is a really solid feeling tool. Nothing about it, nothing feels chintzy or cheap. If you've ever picked up a power tool and it felt oddly light and immediately thought cheap junk, that will not happen with this grinder. I haven't taken this thing apart, but it feels as though Makita has used metal where it's needed and not, repeat, not put plastic anywhere they could get away with it. This tool has some really nice heft to it and feels really well built. The brushless motor. The added power, increased battery life, and durability of brushless motors are an especially big plus on a tool that gets the kind of heavy use most angle grinders are subject to. The ergonomics and balance are also excellent. Even with a battery attached, it's not heavy in the back. And the switch and hand grip are sized to be easy to hang on to, so they're necked down a little bit from where the motor is. And this paddle switch feels solid and the safety catch is unobtrusive and easy to operate. This is even true in unusual position, even with gloves on. See? No problem. You just... That's it. Not like the safety switches on some things, which are constantly getting in the way. Okay, so one of the less obvious things about this grinder that I like is that the included guards are actually large enough to be effective. And what I mean by that is something like this open-sided guard. I can get a hold of it. If you look, it's actually deep enough to completely cover, or more or less completely cover, this wire wheel. And that's really a big deal, because if you ever grind with one of these things long enough, 
the little wires break and they will come flying off and they come flying off in all different directions but it's the ones that come directly at you that are a problem if you've ever done that kind of grinding you'll know that you'll get speared right in the stomach with all kinds of these little wires and when you're done you look down at your shirt and you have a dozen or two little spears in you like you pissed off some sort of tiny iron porcupine it's not fun the other thing is this particular guard does have this quick release which allows you to really easily change where it is depending on the angle you're using the grinder and fortunately this one also came with this other guard the secondary guard which completely encloses anything you put in it and you usually use it with something like a cutting wheel that way if something like this does shatter like it did on me anything that does come off of this is completely covered and it doesn't come back at you the user Despite all these superlatives, this grinder does have a small number of minor downsides. For one, the guards can be fiddly to put on. If you don't get them lined up perfectly, you can find yourself doing things like this. Now eventually, they'll settle down and you can get them on, and then things are a piece of cake. But if you don't remember that this small notch lines up with that small little bump, it can be a lot of screwing around. And if you're also used to being able to just set them down forward and not turn them around, that's a little fiddly. Uh, that one I think is worth it because really this thing hasn't been tightened at all. And look at it. It still stays on. That's a good safety feature. Next, the top speed on this grinder is 8,500 RPM, which is less than corded grinders, which typically operate between 10,000 RPM and 12,000 RPM. Well, the power is great for a cordless tool. It's just not comparable to modern corded grinders. That's not terribly surprising, but it's not you're not looking at quite the same situation you would be with, say, a cordless drill where you can more or less dispense with a drill that has a cord on it. For some applications, this is more of an adjunct tool than it is capable of being the primary tool. In practice, the speed and power of this grinder have never been an issue for me. I've never been using the grinder and thought it needed more speed or more torque. That said, this is pretty much the only grinder I use anymore, which says a lot about how much I like this grinder. However, if you switch between this cordless grinder, powerful though it may be, and a plug-in grinder that operates at close to 12,000 RPM and has an 8 amp or maybe even a larger motor than that, you will notice the difference. Whether or not that difference matters to you is strictly a matter of personal preference. Battery life has been pretty good under intermittent use. Under sustained heavy loads like constant grinding or long abrasive cuts, I found that my four amp hour batteries give me maybe 20 minutes of run time, perhaps less. It kind of depends on how hard you push on the tool and if it's cold outside. Based on a project I did just before this review, my guess is that a five amp hour or six amp hour battery will last long enough to take a cutting disc like this down to a little stump like this which should give you a rough approximation of the available runtime with this tool. With cordless angle grinders, it's really tough to give an estimate of battery life because the applications they are used for can vary quite a bit. If you are doing a lot of sustained grinding or cutting on a regular basis, I still think you're better off with a corded grinder for those jobs. I purchased this particular grinder about three years ago and it is a model XAG-10A. Since then, Makita has dramatically expanded their cordless angle grinder line. When I purchased this grinder, it was at or near the top of the line, and now it's closer to the bottom. And the features that this grinder has are present in many different Makita cordless grinders. And in fact, almost everything in this review can and does apply to essentially all of Makita's 18-volt, 4.5-inch brushless grinders. Makita does have a lot of different four and a half inch angle grinders. As far as I know, they're all brushless, and it'll help you to know that they have basically four major differences between them. Some of them have a paddle switch, like this one does right here. Others will have a slide switch. That's usually something you find right on the top of the tool right here. Some are fixed speed, like this one. They operate at 8,500 RPM free speed, and that's it. Others are variable speed, so there'll be a variable speed dial somewhere. That operates between 3,000 and 8,500 RPM. Some have an electric brake, like this unit. That stops the spindle in two seconds. And the last difference is that some have AWS and some don't have AWS. And AWS stands for Auto Start Wireless System and allows tools equipped with the AWS to wirelessly trigger compatible dust extractors. So if you want a grinder with Bluetooth, there you go. As far as I can tell, the top speed and the motor are the same on all the current brushless four and a half inch angle grinders.
In conclusion, I think this angle grinder is a terrific tool with few disadvantages. The Makita 18 volt cordless tool system is vast, and if you already have the batteries, this is a fantastic tool to add to your collection. I also think the five amp hour batteries that come with the grinder kits would be really useful with this grinder. So if you need more batteries or you find a really good promotion, buying the kit may be a better way to go than just getting a bare tool like I did here. Heck. Even if you primarily use a different cordless system, buying one of the kits and using it as a standalone tool would not be a mistake. I'm really glad I bought this cordless angle grinder, and I'm sure if you buy a Makita brushless angle grinder, you're going to love it too. Thanks for watching, folks. If you like this video, please watch another video and subscribe to this channel. Views and subscriptions help the channel grow, and I do appreciate them. Goodbye for now, and I'll see you in another video.